OK, so before Dan gets carried away with databases, let's look at what happens when you use an intent to transition between activities. Within Sunshine, if you tap on a list in the main activity, it opens up the detail activity. But the main activity remains on the back stack, ready to reappear as soon as you hit back. Now in that example, both activities are within the same app. But as we learned in lesson three, you can also launch the browser or maps app from Sunshine. Or for that matter, the user can hit home. And launch apps from there, or they can use the recents key or switch to another app using notifications. All of these options mean you can end up with a lot of apps on your back stack. Now, keep in mind that our resources on devices are extremely limited. So it's not a good idea to have dozens of apps sitting idle in the background. Android solves this for us, so you don't have to use those awful task killer apps. So how does it do that? Well, it kills low priority applications that you haven't used in a while. We'll go into detail on exactly how it figures out which app needs to die in lesson six. But for now, it's important to realize that your app isn't in control of its own destiny. It can be killed at any time. So you need to know how to deal with that. And that means understanding the life cycle of an activity and the signals we get from the framework to indicate its progress through the lifetime.